Every now and then, I will come across a conspiracy theory that is so batshit bonkers mental that the initial and most common and understandable response is to ask, what kind of nutter actually believes this bollocks? And in my experience, the answer to that question is always David Icke. Recently, and quite possibly for the last time ever, David Icke was the focus of some attention by the mainstream media, and as a result, a lot of general conversation online. This happened following Facebook and YouTube's decision to remove his channels and pages and ban him from their websites. It appears that both of these incidents were due to Ike uploading videos that promoted various conspiracy theories and misinformation about the coronavirus. These include the claim that a Jewish group was behind the coronavirus, that 5G mobile networks were responsible for making people unable to absorb oxygen, and that you cannot contract the virus by shaking hands. Whatever your personal feelings are regarding David Icke, being banned by these websites is quite frankly irrelevant. The bottom line is that these websites have the right to remove and ban whoever they want, and they don't care whether you or I like it or not. But there does seem to be a lot of well-meaning people out there who support David Icke, not just out of principle, but because they like him and some of the things that he says. If you're one of these people, I highly recommend that you keep watching this video because I have to wonder, how well do you actually know David Icke? How many of this man's radical ideas have you actually heard? By his own admission, and to the surprise of possibly no one, David Icke wasn't very good at school and made no effort to try and get better. In 1963, he failed his 11 plus exams, which, without wanting to appear immensely patronising, is about as difficult as putting on a pair of trousers. However, there was one thing that he was good at, football, in particular as a goalkeeper. At the age of 15, he was signed by Coventry City FC to be their youth team's goalkeeper. Unfortunately, his promising football career was cut very short due to him developing arthritis and having to retire at the age of 21. He subsequently got into sports media, becoming a sports editor for the Daily Mail and doing commentary for the BBC. In the late 1980s, he also became involved in politics, becoming involved with the Green Party, even running as a candidate at one point. However, in 1991, he resigned from the Greens, stating that he was about to be the centre of a tremendous and increasing controversy, and that may have been the only time that David Icke was 100% right. As for the other times, well, that's what I'm here for. I'm Dick Coughlin with whatacuntyouare.com, and here are seven times David Icke was an insane cunt. Number one, he claimed to be Jesus. It's a testament to how bonkers David Icke is that almost nobody remembers or even knows about this. For most people, if you claim to be the second coming of the Messiah, that's normally the highlight of your career and the epitome of your bat shittery. But for Ike, it was only the beginning. In 1991, a few weeks after leaving the Green Party, David Ike held a press conference. He announced that he was the son of the Godhead, and he informed everyone that the world was going to end in 1997. Spoiler alert, he was wrong. He claimed he was getting these informations from, I shit you not, voices in his head and automatic writing, which is a form of telepathy where spirits communicate by possessing the living and using their bodies to write down messages. This ultimately led to one of the most bizarre and awkward interviews in the history of television, when David Icke appeared on the Terry Wogan show. Terry Wogan introduced the segment by saying, the world as we know it is about to end which drew laughter from the audience. The audience nervously laughed again when Wogan asked Ike if he believed he was the son of God. Rather than give a straight answer, Ike replied with, well, Jesus would have been laughed at too. He repeated his belief that the world would soon end, noting that Britain would be destroyed by earthquakes and tidal waves. Ike tried to spin the situation by claiming, laughter is the best way to remove negativity, as if the audience was laughing out of nervous fear that Ike's doomsday prediction was likely. Wogan then delivered one of the most savage lines in TV history by telling Ike, but they're laughing at you, 
they're not laughing with you. Ike said that for years following this interview, he couldn't walk down the street without people laughing or mocking him. Number two, endorsing the protocols of Zion. Ike has constantly been dogged by accusations that he is anti-Semitic, a claim which he has always repeatedly denied. These accusations first arose in 1994 with the release of his book called Robots Rebellion. In the book, Ike explicitly claimed that the plan for world domination by a shadowy cabal, possibly extraterrestrial, was laid out in the Protocols of Zion. Now, I'm not going to get into why the Protocols of Zion is total bullshit. I did that two years ago. I'll leave a link to that video below. Suffice to say, the idea that you can endorse and promote the Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion and claim that you're not anti-Semitic is even more laughable than someone promoting the bell curve whilst claiming not to be racist. Sure, you can say it all you want, but it's simply not true. Robots Rebellion also led to Ike being officially banned from the Green Party, who denounced him and his book. Number three. No, seriously, he's definitely not anti-Semitic. If Ike thought that 1994's Robots Rebellion would be an end of the accusations of anti-Semitism, then he was, as is always the case, sorely mistaken. In 1995, he released a book called The Truth Shall Set You Three which was considered to be so overtly anti-Semitic that Gateway Publishing, who had printed all of Ike's previous books so far, refused to be associated with it. The only way that Ike could get the book printed was to set up his own publishing company and self-publish the book. Here's a breakdown of Ike's claims in The Truth Shall Set You Free. He firstly doubles down on his previous book's claim that the Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion is an authentic, genuine historical document. He goes on to describe the Talmud as among the most appallingly racist documents on the planet. According to Ike, uh, B'nai B'rith, a Jewish rights and ad advocacy organisation founded by 12 German Jewish immigrants in New York in 1843, was apparently behind the slave trade which is a conspiracy also favoured by Louis Farrakhan. And it controls the KKK, quoting, B'nai B'rith means sons of alliance, which it actually doesn't. It actually means children of the covenant. And if you can't even get the name of the group you're criticising right, then why would you believe anything else he has to say about it? Ike claims that many far-right white supremacist groups are actually fronts for Jewish organisations. Quote, in Britain, he writes, I am told by an extremely reliable source, very close to the intelligence organisations, that the far-right group Combat 18 is a front for the sinister Anti-Defamation League in the United States and the Israel Israeli Rothschild Secret Service Mossad. The Anti-Defamation League has been operating in Britain and Europe since at least 1991, and its role is to brand as anti-Semitic anyone who is getting close to the truth of what's going on. What better way to discredit an investigator than to have a far-right group like Combat 18 to praise them? Since this book was written, Combat 18 was prescribed by the British government and declared a terrorist organisation. But one can only assume Ike believes that this is still true of modern far-right groups. Ike proceeds to claim that Jews are behind many of the so-called anti-Semitic hate crimes. Quote, If you want to discredit someone, you arrange for an anti-Jewish or anti-whatever events, such as the smashing of graves, assault on people, even a terrorist bomb in the extreme. You then point the finger at your target person or group. You say they are, e they are either directly responsible or incited the actions by what they are writing and saying. FYI, this is literally what the Nazis used to say when asked about many of the attacks on synagogues. But wait, there's more. Ike then asserts that Jews financed their own extermination because Adolf Hitler was bankrolled by the Warburgs, who were part of the Rothschild Empire. Ike tries to support this claim by citing American right-wing conspiracy theorist and author Gary Allen, who was a lifelong member of the John Birch Society and a speechwriter for pro-segregationist Alabama Governor George Wallace. And finally, just in case you're still not convinced, how about this quote from the book? 
Why do we play a part in suppressing alternative information to the official line of the Second World War? How is it right that while this fierce suppression goes on, free copies of the Spielberg film Schindler's List are given to schools to indoctrinate children with the unchallenged versions of events? And why do we, who say we oppose tyranny and demand freedom of speech, allow people to go to prison and be vilified and magazines be closed down on the spot for suggesting another version of history. He literally said that schools should teach the controversy when it comes to the Holocaust. Number four, yes, it's the shape-shifting reptilians from outer space bollocks. You knew this was coming if there is one bonkers mental conspiracy that people associate with Ike more than any other... It's the one about space lizards, am I right? Ike vaguely alluded to this notion in both Robots Rebellion and The Truth Shall Set You Free, but it wasn't until the release of his 1999 book, very humbly titled The Biggest Secret, The Book That Will Change the World, that he decided to dive balls first into the reptilian overlord abyss. To put it as concisely as I can, Ike believes that an interdimensional race of reptilian beings called the Archons have hijacked the Earth and are stopping humanity from realising its true potential. He believes that a genetically modified human-slash-Archon hybrid race of shape-shifting reptilians known as the Babylonian Brotherhood, or the Illuminati, manipulate global events to keep humans in constant fear so the Archons can feed off the negative energy that this creates. I don't know about you, but has the phrase citation needed ever been more appropriate? Also, if these giant reptiles from another dimension want human beings to live in constant fear, then why wouldn't they just remain in their reptilian form? If I woke up tomorrow to discover that all of the world's leaders were seven foot tall intergalactic space lizards, I would shit my pants without question. And then I'd think, well, at least that explains Michael Gove. To this day, Ike has maintained that he genuinely believes this to be true. However, there are some people who believe that the whole conspiracy is actually just a very outlandish euphemism slash dog whistle for the same anti-Semitic bullshit that he always has believed in and still does. To be honest, I really don't know because it's totally believable that Ike is capable of either. Number five, and if being a seven foot tall lizard from outer space wasn't enough, apparently they are also all cannibals and paedophiles. I know, where do they find the time? Number six, the moon. Ike believes that physics has been unable to explain why a planet the size of the Earth has a moon of such a large size in comparison, claiming that our moon would be expected to only be about 40 miles in diameter, but it is closer to 2,000 miles. Ike has deduced that because of this, it must have been artificially built, rather than being broken off Earth after it was hit by another planet, as scientists suggest. In a video posted to his YouTube channel, David Icke explains his, his madcap theory. He said, quote, They have no bloody clue where the moon came from, and it shouldn't, according to physics, be there. The Earth not only has a satellite, but it, but it is a giant satellite. Some scientists don't talk about a planet-moon relationship, but a planet-planet relationship. The moon is bigger than Pluto. And then we get to the hollow moon. This is what I'm saying, and others have said it's a hollowed out planetoid. Ike then says that the moon was hit by a lunar module to the equivalent of one ton of TNT in November 1969, and the shock waves built up, with NASA scientists apparently saying that the moon rang like a bell. He then described a launch vehicle later striking the moon with the equivalent force of 11 tons of TNT, and NASA said the moon rang like a gong and continued to vibrate for 3 hours and 20 minutes to a depth of up to 25 miles. Ike said in the video, these two Russian scientists from the Society Academy of Science wrote an article in 1970 in Sputnik magazine in Russia entitled is the moon the creation of an alien intelligence? To all, all these years later, it indicates to the fact that they were right. 
Ike has also written numerous articles on his website claiming that these reptilian overlords used the moon to broadcast, quote, holographic experiences into humans' minds that we think are real. In brief, he argues that the universe is made up of a vibrational energy. The world as we perceive it is just a holographic projection of this. Time is an illusion. There is no past and no future, only an infinite now. Humans are infinite awareness. We are consciousness. All that, th all that there is, has been and ever can be. But we are the victims of a conspiracy. An interdimensionary race of beings called the Archons have hijacked our world and have stopped us from realising our full potential. Instead, they keep us trapped in five-sense reality, feeding off this negative energy created by hate and fear. Now, who can argue with that? Number seven, he believes in literally every single conspiracy theory ever. Now, at this stage, this probably should not come as a surprise to you, but it is something that is actually very unique to David Icke. Even the most batshit career conspiracy peddlers, like Alex Jones, are willing, in certain cases, to accept the official story when it suits them and their narrative. Ike, on the other hand, has never made any such exceptions or concessions, from Holocaust denial to 9-11 no-plane theories, to being an anti-vaxxer to a climate change denier, to, to saying harp controls the weather, to the coronavirus is caused by 5G. You name it, Ike believes it. It would be easy for us to look at David Icke and just point and laugh and dismiss him as a complete looney tune. But the worrying thing is how many people out there are willing to buy into what he's selling. This isn't necessarily because they are bad or crazy people. They, they just may not know as much about David Icke as people like me do. To most of these well-meaning people, on the surface, Icke's overall message about freeing your mind from hate and division can seem very appealing and attractive. But the truth is that David Icke's worldview is even more toxic, hateful, divisive and oppressive than the one that he claims to be fighting against, and the human race will be better off without him. My name's Dick Coughlin with whatacuntur.com. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and consider supporting me on Patreon. Good night, may God be less, and where there's no sense, there's no feeling.